So, hello, come back to another episode of the Self the World with Hectics podcast. And in the background, you can already see the video that we're going to watch together today, which is by Tim Ferriss and featuring Gabor Mate. Uh, as far as I know, he has Hungarian origin. And um, also, I think his parents were in concentration camps or in the concentration camp. So there definitely is some, you know, backstory there, some very um, interesting and I would also argue forming backstory. Um, he is a psychologist, psychoanalyst, psychotherapist. I never actually quite know with these guys. Um, they are quite everything, um, kind of. Actually, they are not. I would actually have to check that up. Uh, or check that out or search for that. But anyway, um, it is about how to process anger and rage. I have um, quite some time ago actually been talking about uh, this episode quite a lot because I found it incredibly useful and incredibly interesting um, since, at least at my point of view, the information given there was, uh, you know, very, very useful and uh, had actionable advice and also a way to understand oneself. Um, and this is not always, I think, that easy when you're raging and when one's go-to behavior or one's go-to feeling is anger, which I definitely know. Um, there's also an episode on uh, some compulsive behavior. I don't remember the name, but um, but yeah, which was also quite interesting, quite useful. Let's check it out. This video is from September the 8th, 2022. So it is fairly recent. And once again, it is called Dr. Gabor Mate, which is M-A-T-E with an apostrophe. Is it an apostrophe? Well, anyway, on how to process anger and rage from the Tim Ferriss show and therefore also by Tim Ferriss. Let me come back to the rage for a second, because I would love to get your advice or at least hear of some of your learnings over the last decades. Because I recall from our first conversation that, you know, in your 40s, you're a successful doctor, you're a driven workaholic, you had challenges in your marriage, your kids were, at least based on my notes, sort of afraid of you at points because of your rages. That's right. What have you learned about rage and anger? How do you relate to it or metabolize it? And I ask as someone who has a long history of <laughs> running on anger as a maybe a corrosive fuel of sorts. So I would I would love to just hear you expand on that in any way that makes sense. So there was a great neuroscientist, his name was Jack Panksepp, P A N K S E P P, who tragically died a few years ago of cancer. And he distinguished a number of brain systems that we share with other mammals. <clears throat> they include uh, care. He, he capitalized these. So C-A-R-E, care. Then something he, call, he calls grief and panic. Then fear, lust, seeking, play, and rage. These are all brain systems that we have. They're all necessary for mammalian life. They're all necessary. Now, the, by rage, he means the anger that arises when our boundaries are being transgressed. If I were to infringe on your boundaries, either physically or emotionally, the healthy response for you is to mount an anger response. No, get out, stay away. That's healthy. Healthy anger is in the moment. It protects your boundaries and then it's gone. It's not necessary anymore. However, if your boundaries were infringed as a child, but you could not express it, it doesn't disappear. It gets and this is particularly important to notice and underline since Gabor Mate is, well, I would kind of say a specialist in childhood trauma and also to some degree, I would say, opened my eyes to the, um, well, to, to, to the fact that there is such a lot of childhood trauma and, you know, quite everybody has some sort of childhood trauma. And it is definitely something to consider and definitely something to keep in mind when one is having to deal with certain behavior that one maybe does not really understand or maybe even really hates about oneself. Is it maybe because of my childhood? Was there something that happened and this is why I am dealing with things in that way and this is why I'm, I'm being this type of person? It is very, very important to, to not forget about that, uh, forget about those things and... Um, I hope he also talks about something pretty crucial. I might add that then, but think about it. 
you know, maybe even write it down becomes more clear or thoughts become more clear when written down. But yeah, just something really to underline. It's suppressed. It becomes almost like a volcano that's gurgling and, 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 and bubbling inside you, but it's had no expression. Now, why did you suppress it? Because if you're being, well, you've been very public about this, so I'm sure you'll allow me to mention it, but you've some time after you and I talked, you actually publicly acknowledge that you'd been sexually abused as a child. I did. Now, when that's happening to a small child, the last thing you can afford is to is to be angry. Because if you get rageful at the boundary invasion, you're going to get hurt even more. So suppressing that rage becomes a survival mechanism. Nothing wrong with it. It's the right thing to do. You don't do it. Your brain will do it for you. And it was particularly the right thing to do as a child. And uh, this is quite the problem. I think realizing that this behavior and this way of dealing with things back in the days maybe even, um, well, let us live and, and provided us with health and, and life, kind of. Um, but it is not needed anymore. But of course, when something is so deeply rooted, it's not that easy. It really isn't. Um, so uh, I think this lets one clearly understand why one is having this behavior and one is engaging in this behavior, why one is being such a type of person because you had to. There was no other way to, to do things because you maybe would have died in kind of the most extreme scenario in the most extreme situation, but this is it. And um, at least for me, it made me think, well, um, yeah, that's that's actually it. I mean, it, it makes sense and uh, it also makes sense then to be such a person. Dramatically as a way of preserving your life. Or your, or your relative safety. But the rage doesn't go away. What happens then later on as an adult, something triggers you, and all of a sudden it just explodes out of you, and you have no control over it. Now it's no longer a response, a healthy response to the present moment, but it's a response to the past. And just as my hurt and sense of abandonment and then rage was triggered by my wife not picking me up at the airport, so a person's rage can be triggered by something relatively minor. Um, just having in there, his wife did not get him from the airport via car or, or whatever. And um, this triggered this feeling inside of him of, of um, you know, not being important enough and or being forgotten about and, and so on and so forth, which, you know, made him feel bad and, and made him be mad, which um, makes sense. Just, you know, I, I want to underline this again, which makes sense if you're viewing it in this way of, okay, I am a child and apparently, at least I think, no one really cares about me, or even indeed, no one really cares about me. It then really makes sense that I am also as an adult um, using or, or behaving in this behavior. Does this make sense? No, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, that, that I'm having this behavior because I'm trying to, um, well, probably just express my emotions and sometimes protect myself. But all of a sudden this lava flow just explodes out of you. And the difference between healthy anger, and by the way, suppressing healthy anger is also unhealthy for you. We can talk about that. But just as healthy anger expresses itself, does its job, and then it's gone, rage, the way such as I'm describing, such as the way I used to experience it and probably as used to experience it, the more it explodes, the bigger it gets. That's what happens to me. It doesn't it, it pass through. Me. Sorry? No, I was just reinforcing that by saying, you know, I've I've worked with certain therapists who have said, you know, punch a pillow, express the rage, let it just pass through you like the wind. But that isn't, in fact, what happens with me. And I know I'm not the only one. It actually magnifies and intensifies and extends this feeling. Exactly. Because it recruits more brain circuits into its service. So that's the difference between healthy anger on the one hand, which is an essential boundary defense. And by the way, so much parenting advice in this culture tells parents to force kids to suppress their anger. Really unhealthy advice. And um, there's healthy anger, then there's that rage that you and I have both experienced. That, to work with that, no, it's, look, if you're gonna punch a human being and there's a pillow to punch instead, better to punch the pillow. <laughs> right. No question about that. But as a technique of dealing with it, no, that's not how you learn to process that rage because it needs to be processed. How do you approach the processing? 
and it's probably not really about the behavior and i think this is what most people then think about and, and are trying to act on that okay i am not allowed anymore kind of to to be angry i'm not allowed to punch something or whatever um this uh, is probably not the, the problem which you know might kind of be rooted in western medicine that you know everything is about the symptoms and not that much is about well not quite everything that might be an over uh, i might be overdoing things but most often it is indeed uh not really about the root causes and the root cause when it comes to this case of anger is um childhood trauma and and working on that and working that out is um probably the way to go here but of course um it becomes increasingly difficult when you do not know that it is about childhood trauma or there was something or something happened or whatever and you are and this probably might then be the first step trying to figure out what um what is going on and, and you know finding a reason why this is happening to you and um, you are like this what is a more effective prescription or one possible way of thinking about it or approaching it well if i was working with you I would encourage you to fully experience the body experience of rage, what's happening in your body. And you'll find that it's not just an idea in your head, it's something that dominates your visceral experience of yourself, your muscles, your breathing, your abdomen, your entire nervous system. And um, there's ways of just helping you experience it. Experience it by recognizing, raising the awareness of, of being with it. Now that there's a wonderful Buddhist lineage, spiritual teacher, meditation teacher called Tara Brach, who talks about rain, recognize, allow, investigate and nurture. So you recognize, oh yeah, this is happening to me right now. Meditation might help there as well to especially recognizing things, recognizing emotions, first of all, arising and then being there. And this then probably enables you to ask more questions and probably ask better questions as well. Like, uh, well, why is this happening right now? Um, also, maybe uh, differentiating or comparing the the magnitude of this emotion that is happening at this time or that you're feeling right now um, so that you can, uh, well, compare it to the last time, to, to, to yesterday, to a different situation. And maybe also through that one can then figure out the root cause and the, the reason why and you know, whether there is something childhood trauma related or not. And um, questioning and questioning oneself and questioning one's actions and questioning one's behaviors probably is always a good idea. But I think just meditation the practice of mindfulness and probably also hypnosis and, and many more uh let's call them techniques probably enable you to um to have an easier time and a better time doing so okay i'm gonna allow it not along it in the sense of i'm gonna act it out on somebody else but i'm gonna be with the experience and then investigate it. okay what is this really all about and then nurture that little person that had to suppress all that rage. It's a nutshell view of it. But in other words, there's ways of working with it through the body that doesn't involve either suppressing it or acting it out, but in experiencing it. There's also something by, I think, Andrew Huberman, if I am not quite mistaken here. And um, it was quite about when your mind is not it's not in the right spot maybe you you should be doing something with your body to get your mind in this specific spot um maybe also something and i'm just trying to to shine spotlights onto certain ideas onto certain things maybe also something to help also something something helpful but um i think in general like trying to understand and this is what i meant before and i i was really hoping that he's pointing it out and that he's talking about this well but um accepting it and trying to understand it, trying to, um, well, yeah, trying to accept it and not demonizing it. Like he said just before, nurturing this little child, nurturing, nurturing this this little thing, this this little us, quite and uh, seeing uh, seeing the behavior as as not you know not something bad, but just the way we express this emotion, we express what is happening to us and in us, and. Uh, um, I think understanding and accepting and uh, de-demonizing the behavior, which is often demonized and often 
is being said not to engage in it and that this is the problem, I think already makes things better and easier for one to to deal with those those situation and those um well those <laughs> workplaces um but yeah of course uh therapy definitely therapy and and definitely uh probably a lot of talking you know if not possible and there is some some free option some uh no cost alternatives online to uh, psychotherapy as far as I know um, of course I don't know about the quality of that but um, yeah probably helpful and I would also definitely suggest checking out the whole episode by Gabor Mate um, very interesting guy especially also as well in terms of anger because he himself was a really rageful person and a really angry person which I think is you know always quite good because they then know better what they're talking about and then how it actually feels like not necessarily what they're talking about um but how it feels like and um, how one is feeling like quite but um yeah with that being said i'm gonna end the episode here i really deeply hope that i've been able to share something of value to you um please subscribe maybe even like the video and i'm hopefully gonna see you the next time where i'm shining spotlights on certain ideas that i found interesting or find interesting but yeah with that being said, 